today we're on Home Island and we just walked to the end of the beach that we've been cleaning and seen this devastation that is from the last high tide and I have never seen anything like this this incredible amount of straws of plastic film rope chase brushes there's water cups just phenomenal, which and so overwhelming to see this surviving on the beach everywhere. And really, to find the last high tide is quite difficult because as you look up the beach, you see more and more and more, and then as you look into the water, there's even more waiting to come in, waiting to be pushed in. Really overwhelming. As you started to move different layers the bits of microplastics, the pieces that were breaking up into ever smaller pieces became really frustrating um, to the point where it kind of breaks your spirit. Um, and just knowing that each single use item on average is in use for only five minutes and then is discarded and can then be in the environment forever is just yeah it's just enormous um, and it weighs heavy on you when you're at these locations which should be island paradises currently i feel helpless if i'm completely honest very overwhelmed like you can't stop picking up little stuff because it's going to go back into the ocean but you want to pick up the big stuff so it doesn't break down into little stuff and there's not enough time so I don't know what to do. Yeah, it was a bit crazy. Okay, right now I'm just thinking this is utter devastation. This is just so beyond belief and so soul destroying and depressing and unbelievably bad that humans have just allowed this to happen and as fast as we're cleaning up more rubbish is coming in and it's very difficult to stem this tide today it is just overwhelming and probably one of the most depressing sights i've seen in my 65 years on this planet horrible horrible Cocos is not alone in the issue of plastic pollution on its beaches. Around the world there are many, many islands that are suffering exactly the same uh, issues. And this is a global issue. Plastic in the ocean doesn't stop anywhere. If it, it just floats on tides and currents around the world. And we feel that it's an obligation to remove that plastic when we see it on, on the beaches. It is a pollution. If you were to see an oil spill, it will be dealt with, but we see plastic pollution and it's not always being dealt with. Sea Shepherd coming here to our little island helps because it showcases what's happening on our, our little island is multiplied many times around the world. So various coastal and island communities around the world have this same issue. Given the global nature of marine debris, it's something that needs to be attacked and challenged at a, at a high level. It's not just on Cocos that we see these plastics, it's beaches throughout the world in remote places that are thousands of kilometres from the nearest major population centre, yet we're seeing the impacts of their decisions washing up on our beaches. Ocean plastics washing up on the shores of Cocos is of a grave concern to Council and the Shire. It's um, a problem, a global problem, not of our making, but we seem to be um, the victim of this issue. We know the plastic we're seeing here in Cocos is not 
coming from Australia, it's coming from overseas. But how can we expect those countries who have less wealth, less infrastructure, to deal with that issue when we here in Australia are not doing it? We don't have best practices. We don't have the legislation that's needed to stop ocean plastics. We hope that there are changes to policy and global management of plastic waste at its source so it doesn't end up on our shores. We have to keep fighting for the health of the oceans. We have no option not to. And that means we must continue to put the pressure on governments and on the plastic producers to deal with this uh, problem and put best practices into place. You see, education is a key element. So the cleanups are fantastic because they, they remove the physical rubbish from the beaches, but we see that the issue is more We've got to target it at the source. Where is this debris coming from and how do we stop it entering the ocean? It's, it's easy to get depressed and go, this is a problem that's beyond our scope to fix, but the reality is it's not. If we all, we can all make single individual little changes that can positively impact it. And if, if we're all doing that and putting pressure in the appropriate places, then we can drive for positive change. And, our, our tiny little speck in the Indian Ocean is, is the poster child for that to show we need to protect these environments. It's been fantastic to have Sea Shepherd here for the last two weeks helping with the cleanups um, because I, I think the, the best thing about it is knowing that there are people out there who care and who are trying not just care but are actually actively doing something about it. Ocean currents um, push the plastics to particular hot spots around the atoll. Um, South Island, the Back of Direction Island, a, a beach on Home Island. So uh, these, there are these hot spots, but uh, other beaches around Cocos are spectacular. They're, they are almost untouched and they're, you know, they really are perfect. a kid and you conjure up an image of a tropical island, that was Cocos. It's white sandy beaches, palm tree, blue water. Every kid drew a picture of a tropical island and they, they didn't know it at the time, but they were drawing Cocos. We can't afford to give up. We can't afford to be overwhelmed and feel that this is a hopeless situation because it's not. When you look back over the years, you can see that changes are being made. There is a huge awareness and education in, in the issue of plastic. To solve this issue needs many stakeholders on board and we all need to be motivated to make a change.